There are two readings this morning. The first you can find on page 970 if you're using the Bibles. That's from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. And this section is headed, Giving to the Needy. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 11 and the section is headed generosity encouraged. Remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. Thank you, Keith. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. For this moment to celebrate harvest and to think about what you're calling us to in terms of the giving of ourselves, of our wealth, our time, our talents for your for your kingdom to grow. So just as I speak from your word, just ask, Lord, that you would just open our hearts to hear. Amen. So our our theme this morning is the gift of giving and uh, Commitment Sunday is the the Sunday in the year when we think about our, our giving to God through the local church here. Now, this can mean both our financial giving, but also our time and our talents. And the church needs both if it's going to fulfill its calling. And um, thank you if you read my letter a couple of weeks ago preparing us for, for Commitment Sunday. And I want to speak this morning particularly about, about the financial aspect of our giving. And um, I just want to really say three things. Well, three things to start with. Firstly, that our financial giving is part of our discipleship. It's an expression of our worship and it's an expression of our commitment to follow Jesus. If we say that Jesus is Lord of our lives, that must mean every aspect of our lives, including finance. Secondly, the local church has always depended upon the generosity of its congregation to thrive and grow. We can only do all that we believe God is calling us to because we're all involved in giving what we can. And thirdly, that our giving is not primarily about covering costs and paying the bills. It's about investing in the future. It's like sowing seed. We give in faith, believing that God will multiply our offering and bring blessing to many lives beyond what we could ask or imagine. 
And quite honestly, every Commitment Sunday, I'm reminded of the way that this church was birthed from seeds of faith and generosity. And it, it's interesting, actually, as we go through the spiritual gifts, last week was the gift of faith. And the gift of faith and generosity are very closely linked because when we have faith for something, very often we'll want to give towards it in order to help to make it happen. And last week, Yena shared um, about the bold and extraordinary dream for a visible sign of God's kingdom here on the heath that was kind of birthed 30 years ago. And over the years, many of you have given generously and sacrificially so that we can remain faithful to our calling to be a community where everyone can encounter the transforming love of Jesus. And the thing that, that struck me listening to Yenna recount the story was just how much the gift of giving is linked to the gift of faith. So this morning, as we think about our financial giving to God, I want us to spend a few moments eavesdropping on another church leader as he teaches his congregation about, about financial giving. So in our reading, we heard how Paul, who is writing to the church in Corinth, um, much like us, they're a, a local church that kind of want to know how they can live in a way that is faithful and bless the world. And Paul writes to them about living holy lives, about forgiving one another, about their strength being made perfect in weakness about how they're to be faithful in their witness to the world around them. And then he goes on to talk about generosity and giving. And he tells them about a church in Macedonia that just blew him away with their, with their generosity. Though poor themselves, he writes how astounded he was by their desire to give to the church in Jerusalem, who they knew was going through a particularly hard financial time. So Paul says to the church in Corinth, look, I know you excel in many things, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in love, and in faith. Now excel in your generosity. Like the Macedonian church, excel in the grace of giving. And uh, the word he used to uses for grace is charis, which means gift, a gift, a gift from God, the gift of of giving. In other words, allow God to free up your hearts and, and release you in the desire to be, to be generous. He then mentions five characteristics or five qualities that are, 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 are really necessary as we consider our giving. And they're all mentioned in the passage that Keith read from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. And the first was give, give generously. Verse six, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So Paul says, look, your giving is an investment. It's not an expense or a bill to pay or you're, you're not throwing good money away. With investments, a bit like sowing seeds, the more you plant, the more you will reap. If you sow much seed, then you will reap a significant harvest. So don't be sparing. Give to God generously. Then he says, give thoughtfully in verse 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart. Don't, don't give just when you feel like giving. Yes, spontaneous gifts are wonderful when they're given. No question about that. But planned regular giving is just so much, so much better. It continues over time. So look at your finances carefully and prayerfully and decide in your heart what you can give. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Does my treasure reflect my heart? Does my heart reflect my treasure? Thirdly, give willingly. Also verse seven, and not reluctantly or under compulsion. Give because you want to give. Give out of your gratitude for all that God has done for you through Jesus Christ. Give out of your love for God. Give because you want to see others blessed. Give because you want to see a harvest in the kingdom of God. 
give because you know that actually at the end of the day, everything you have comes from God anyway, and you're only giving back to him. God loves it when we give cheerfully. And fourthly, give confidently in verse eight. It says, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, you will have all you need. In chapter 8, verse 12, so just a little bit further back, Paul reminds the Corinthians that they're to give out of what they have, not out of what they don't have. So in other words, don't give what you can't afford. But once you have decided what you can afford, then give confidently, trusting that God will look after you and honour your faithfulness. So give out of faith and not out of guilt or fear or obligation. And certainly speaking from my own experience, Rosie and I have just been so blessed when we've been able to give. God has always blessed us back in extraordinary ways. And fifthly, give expectantly in verse 8 and verse 10. You will abound in every good work. He will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. When, when we give thoughtfully, generously, winningly, confidently. It's almost as though something spiritual is released in our lives. We'll we'll be given more grace and more wisdom in what we do. We'll see more blessing in the lives of those around us. Verse 10 talks about God increasing your store of seed. And it's almost the more you give, the more he will give you that you can give more. And not just in finance, but in every area of our life will bear more fruit. And then Paul ends giving a lovely, a lovely summary of the outworking of these five characteristics. He says, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So you're Generosity will not only release material blessings to those you give to, but will result in in praise to God. And I get so many comments when people walk into this building for the first time and they just go, wow, what an amazing place. And there's something about about the atmosphere here. I think the generous giving that this church has been built on is an amazing testimony to the faithfulness of God's grace. And just to say also, the gift of giving, it's not about whether you're wealthy or not. It's about something God does in our heart, regardless of how much or how little we have. It's an attitude of heart that wants to give and to bless, even if we can only afford a comparatively small amount. And that's what Jesus wanted to teach when he talked about the widow who gave an offering of just a few coins. And yet he said she has given more than all the rest because she has given out of the little that she has. So let's just take a moment on this Commitment Sunday just to think about our own involvement here at the church on the Heath. And here I I want to do two things. The first is I want to remind us just what it is that we're giving to when we give to the church here. And second, to just say a few words about how much it costs to run the church and a few facts and figures about our church uh, uh, finances. Um, So firstly, when you give to the church on the Heath, what is it that you're giving to? You're giving to a congregation that has come about as a result of Jesus' strategy 2,000 years ago to make himself known through his followers and that they would gather in churches, that they would be the church, they would be his hands and his feet. We're here because of Jesus' strategy 2,000 years ago. You're giving so that the church on the heath can be a worshipping community that will gather every Sunday to take part in an act of worship to which the whole of the community is welcome. You're giving so that songs can be sung, that prayers can be prayed, that the word of God can be explained in a way that speaks to the joys and the sorrows and the successes and the failures of our lives. 
and the complexities of the culture in the world that we live in. You're giving so that we can be a, a family of believers that supports one another, weeps with one another, celebrates with one another, and journeys with one another through the ups and downs of life. You're giving so that those who live on the heath can celebrate important moments in their lives, welcoming newborns, committing to one another in love. And next Sunday at half past two, we'll be having a, a wedding here of a couple from the heath. They can also say goodbye to their loved ones. You're giving so that we can serve the community by enabling them to use our facilities for activities that bring blessing to the community. You're giving so that through our own ministries here in church, we can be a blessing to babies, to parents and carers, to young people, to families, to singles, to the elderly. I love it. Today we're full. Our next service 11 o'clock, <clears throat> so many come on a Sunday morning. And then Monday, all the chairs are cleared away, the toys are out, and we've got 60, sometimes 70 mothers, toddlers, babies upstairs. The, baby, the place is full. Wednesday afternoon, about half of Colthorpe come here, don't they? About 100 young people come. 40 to 50, 60 sometimes stay to engage and play games. So many other activities the monthly Wednesday lunch in the hall, um, all sorts of things we do as a church, not to mention all the hirings from the community. This place is here to bless in so, so many ways. You're given so that we can be a community where everyone can encounter the transforming love of Jesus for the last seven, seven or eight years. That's been our mission statement, our vision and uh, on many occasions, people just walk in looking for God and we're here to, to help point them to him. We're open every day of the week. You're giving so that we as a church can give 10% of all that we, we receive to local and world mission. So everything you give we support different mission agencies, including Food Bank, Fleet Angels, all these things that happen in Fleet Facts, as well as global missions that we, that we celebrate, one of them every month. And our giving goes towards that. And you're giving so that the minister can have very expensive holiday. No, I didn't mean to say that, sorry. You're giving so that we can pay staff to keep our building running well, to have the time to plan and lead and worship and preach God's word thoughtfully and faithfully and to pass on the faith to a new generation in a way that speaks to them amidst the complexities of our rapidly changing culture. So when you give to the church on the heath, to this local church, this is what you're giving to. And when this comes together with the giving of our time and of our talents, I believe we make a significant impact in our local community for the kingdom of God. Are you still with me? Good. Okay. Great. So we've looked at five characteristics of a godly giving. We've reminded ourselves why it is or what, what, what we give to when we give to the church on the heath. And now I want to wrap up with just a few, a few figures as to what it costs to run our church, followed by some practical tips as to how you can give if you want to. So just turn to the person next to you and say roughly, how much do you think it costs per week to run the church on the heath for this building to keep going? Okay, have you picked out a rough figure? I won't ask you to say, but I will show you where we are. So, oh yes, what happens, what, right, I've talked about that. How much does it cost to run the church on the heath? It costs 330,000 per year to run the church on the heath. That's 27,520 per month and 904 pounds per day. I got that right. Is that right? A month. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's better. 27,000 a month. 86% of our income comes from congregational giving and we receive 56,500 back through gift aid. So those who can gift aid, that's an amazing, amazing blessing. And we're assuming an increase of about 5% in costs this year. 
Our income every year is made up of regular giving. So that's you giving to the church, 263,640, including gift aid. Get one-off donations, 26,500. And coffee bar and lettings, Louise, for your amazing work. Um, and Kim and the whole coffee bar team and all that. Never, never mention individuals when you're thanking people. <laughs> Note to self, because you'll always forget someone and go down a rabbit hole. You just wish you hadn't gone down. <laughs> so anyway, coffee bar and lettings, 56,000. And just to say also, these are all the different ministries and things that go on in the church. And so, you know, as I... I mentioned it, it, it's not just about giving of your wealth, it's giving of your time. I know some of you work incredibly hard and, and you, know, you, 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 you don't have a lot of time to give. Some of you do have more time, you're not able to give so much financially, but you can give of your time and many of you do. And if you want to know what those, those different ones are about, on the back of the wall there, we did this uh, I think last year, what goes into producing a harvest at the church on the heath. And you can see all the different activities there. It'll tell you about what they are. And if you want to be involved, contact the leader. Or if you don't know who they are, speak to me and uh, I'll, I'll be able to tell you who to contact. So just to round up, if you've joined us relatively recently and feel you would like to start giving regularly, then please either contact the office or email Simon and Debs, our treasurers, or even if you look up on the website under Give, it's got lots of information as to how, how you can give. If you use cash, you can use our yellow envelope scheme, and we have uh, some of those at the back of church. And of course, the card machine is also at the back of church for one-off offerings. If you do already give, today is perhaps the moment just to review what you can give and just ask, can I increase my financial giving? Or actually, have my circumstances changed and I now need to reduce what I can give so that I can make ends meet? And that's absolutely fine too. And just so that you know, I personally do not know who gives and who doesn't give and how much people give. I have no idea. And that means I can approach all of you without fear or favour, give you a big hug, whether you're giving loads or you're, you know, you're, again, don't go down these rabbit holes, Patrick. Stop. <laughs> Watch your mouth. OK. Anyway, I just wanted you to know that. Often on Commitment Sunday, we, we, we bring before the church family a particular need with an invitation to give a one-off gift at this time of year, if you're able to. And this year, we need our projectors. This one isn't even working this week. So um, this one's kind of old and, 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 and fading, and we need to invest in new projectors for a new, a new season now. And we have chosen them. We have ordered them. They cost 15000 to have the whole lot done and installed. And you have been really generous and we're halfway there. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're able to give a little bit more to make up the other half, that would be so, so appreciated. So if you'd like to, again, have a word with Simon or you can look up on our, our website, How to Give, and just put the reference projectors. Brilliant. So may we all excel in the gift of giving. And once more, thank you and bless you for all you give to our church, for giving generously, thoughtfully, willingly, confidently and expectantly.